when I was in uh, EDS Nuclear. Uh, I was uh, a uh, division manager and uh, they had a problem with me there because they were very authoritarian and I just ignored them. And they weren't used to that, they didn't like that. But anyway, uh, they uh, let me form a group that was doing commercial work versus nuclear work. And uh, Bill Wheeler and uh, Mark Whittlesey and Joe Sclaren worked for me with a bunch of other people in this engineering service operation in the, mainly in the non-nuclear area. And uh, so I got to talking to Bill Wheeler and uh, Mark Whittlesey about uh, how to start our own company. And they, they naively said, oh yeah, let's do that. So. So we actually formed our company, went down and took out the name and everything. So we actually had a company before we left. And of course, me being a person who tended to open his mouth too much and still do, I talked about it. So I got back to the management of EDS Nuclear. So the three of us were in the, in the Napa Valley being at a training session for this company, this large thousand man company, and uh, we were terminated. Uh, which was an interesting thing because I had a wife and three kids and a, a mortgage and Mark and Bill also had, uh, I don't know that Bill at the time had a family, but Mark did. And so uh, it was time for us to go to work. It was also obvious that there was only going to be one person who was electable as president and that was Steve. If anybody knew him, that you would know that was the choice to make. Um, Steve had the unique ability to communicate and to convince people to give him work. That was his really strong point. He was also very, very technically savvy engineer, um, but I'm not sure that he had the patience that Mark and I had to work a problem from beginning to end and get through all the minutia detail. He, but he certainly understood and taught both, all of us. In the early days, Steve was the salesman of the company, of, of, of the joint companies. Um, there was a little bit of selling done by us or by other people, but uh, Steve was the, the leader. And um, I was the techie who got dragged along with Steve to give uh, CFD a credibility, if you like, or at least that's what was, was thought. Yeah, and, and we used to go to companies and do a, a song and dance together um, to some fairly bizarre and out-of-the-way places, uh, um, staying in cheap hotels and, uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun in the process, and, and, and we were actually successful in, in many ways. In those early years, um, when we, you know, hooked up with David Gossman and and uh, we're representing both our services and, and now software, I, I traveled an awful lot with Steve around the world, and we would we would go to Europe and we'd spend a week or two just driving here and there, and we'd have two, three appointments a day, and I was always amazed that when we got there, um, how people greeted Steve, that he was, you know, greeted the way that. I get greeted with uh, visiting extended family. Uh, you know, he'd get there and he'd say, hey, we're two hours early, call that guy, see if he'll see us. And I'm like, oh, I don't know about that, you know. We have an appointment into, call him up, call him up. And I'd call him up and he'd say, yeah, sure, come on up. You know, we'd sit and we'd chat and, and they were all um, very eager to see Steve. And part of it was because we were, we were there with, with something new and something special that was gonna help their companies, but also they were, very happy, very happy seeing Steve. He had that ability and uh, Bill and I used to argue about that because Steve always thought that you could just kind of send anybody out there and <laughs> do what he did. And, and uh, Bill and I both thought, well, you know, neither one of us were as good at it as Steve. For some reason, Steve could connect with the customers and uh, I didn't actually watch him do it a lot because he was out there kind of by himself doing it. I'd sit in meetings occasionally and 
course, when you're in a meeting, it's, a, it's much different than when he's sitting one-on-one -on -one with somebody trying to convince them to do a piece of work with us. But uh, he did have the ability to, uh, to connect with people, not only on just a technical level, but kind of a, a personal level as well, too. And, and that always worked in our favor. Yeah, Steve, um, he stuck out like a sore thumb no matter where he was, okay, in the world. Even in the United States, he sticks out. But he can connect with people better than pretty much anybody I know. And um, he has uh, a genuine interest in everybody he comes across, whether it's just a random uh, encounter on an elevator or a person that you bump into at dinner. Um, he'll strike up a conversation and really genuinely gets to know somebody faster than um, anybody I know, which is a gift, which is why I think people gravitate to him. They, they see that there's a genuine interest. And while he thinks he's being funny on, on certain elements, uh, he really is just building a connection and learning. He's always learning, you know, looking for ways to uh, apply his knowledge, our company, into new areas. And the way you do that is by asking questions. And um, he was good at it. I remember a story, our accountant, you remember Howard, our, our first accountant we had. One time Steve sat in a meeting with a bunch of other business, or I guess they were customers of Howard around in a conference room. I don't know that any of them knew each other. And Howard was talking about a bunch of things. Steve was kind of just sitting there quietly and all these other guys were spouting things and stuff. When Steve finally decided to speak, the whole room got quiet. Howard told me this story. The whole room got quiet. Everybody wanted to listen to what he had to say, even though they, none of these guys had ever met him or spoke to him before. So he just had some kind of a presence that just sort of uh, commanded a, a, an air of attention when he, when he spoke. And Steve was uh, very good at um, finding people and, and bringing them on board. Uh, but it's one thing to acquire talent, and it's a whole other thing to retain it. And, and Steve was um, very good at retaining talent and always has been. And, and part of that is the force of his personality. But in a lot of ways, it's, it's how he, he treated people and he challenged them. And he allowed them to um, put their own input into the task and to take ownership of it and to be proud of it and to really feel it was theirs. So in kind of the respect that he showed people and the way he um, he worked with people, uh, allowed people to, uh, to really thrive in the organization and want to stay here, you know, even though there were a lot of other opportunities out there. S Steve um, has an ability to connect with people that most people don't have. And uh, I think, first of all, he values technical expertise. He himself is an engineer. He values being surrounded by engineers. And so we have people in jobs that typically aren't engineering, uh, people that have engineering degrees hold, and we do at CD DAPCO. Um, but what he also does is he gives you an opportunity to express yourself and take ownership and leadership in an area. And for those people who um, excel or at least give an attempt at excelling, he continues to reinforce that behavior. And, and so it's really, he finds good technical minds and gives them opportunities. And those people who take that opportunity and run with it, he rewards and allows them to continue to, uh, to grow in advance. You know, if you kind of look back and someone wanted to start a company maybe in our area, you know, kind of what would you tell them about, you know, what's important um, well, starting and having a company? You better be ready to work one hell of a lot. So you, you sacrifice a lot, and it's the things around you you sacrifice. So you, if you have a family, you sacrifice being with them. You uh, probably carry the uh, problems of the company home and dump it on them. So uh, you have to realize that's going to happen, and and uh, then uh, consciously know that's going to happen and then accept it. Doesn't mean accept it in the sense you can't change it if you're going to succeed. Uh, maybe you try very hard to do your job and your family uh, whenever you get a chance, but uh, it's, uh, it's hard on them. Or maybe it's good you're not there. You know, it's all in how you look at what you were or are. 
That would, that would be one of the issues I would tell them. That, that there's a lot of, you better be willing to commit and work and do what it takes to do things. Uh, and uh, in a lot of ways I would say don't overthink things. Uh, I'm not a deep thinker, I'm an opportunist. Uh, I have people that work for me that are very good thinkers and very good with a, being able to take a whole bunch of facts and look at them and come to a conclusion. The trouble is by the time they've done all of that, I'm already down the road pretty far. Whether it's the right road or not, I don't know, but you have to adjust as you go. So don't be afraid to change direction, but don't be changing direction like a ping pong ball in a typhoon. So I would say you better be ready to commit and proceed. Commit and proceed. Well, if you ask Steve, how is it that we got to be a $200 million company, he would say it was just dumb luck. Um, but in fact, that's not the truth. Steve, uh, as much as he'd like to appear to just be lucky, um, it wasn't luck, it was a lot of hard work. And he did surround himself with a lot of people uh, that have um, just passion. They share his passion for making customers successful, developing a technology that nobody else can, can uh, replicate, um, to solving engineering problems. And so it's his passion, his leadership, and the fact that he's assembled this team of people that share that vision. Um, that's what allowed us to, to grow from, when I came to the company, we were probably $35 million in size, $40 million to 200 million. And um, it was, you know, it was purposed. I, I don't think it was a random occurrence. Um, yeah, we've made some, you know, lucky good moves in certain areas and some bad moves in others. But um, I think Steve doesn't give himself as much credit as he should because uh, we really got here through his, uh, his vision and leadership. There's a star. Could I do it again? Yeah, I could. I think I could. I'm, uh, you know, an awful lot of this is you will things to happen. You just don't accept defeat. And that's a fact you don't, and don't ever give up.